Hi guys, Jessica here from The Healing Hands Duo, and I know you guys haven't seen us for a while. Um, that's not to say that we haven't been active on some of our other platforms, and that is something that Kevin and I have found a new passion for, is blogging and updating our, our website regularly. So if you guys haven't signed in to our website or you haven't registered for our blogs, or you haven't become a member of our website, then I would ask you guys to do that as well. But we will get into that shortly, right after the intro. Some of you guys have been following us for some time now. You would know that we were, we were trying to upload uh, to our YouTube channel fairly regularly. And if you've never seen us before, then welcome to our channel. And our channel is predominantly all about health and wellness. I noticed a lot of people are watching some of my reviews videos and I will continue to do product reviews. Actually, I'm working with several different companies now on becoming PRs for those companies as well as getting their products in. And I know some people really enjoy those videos, just me reviewing say, um, you know, non-toxic cosmetics or personal hygiene products and all that. And I will continue doing that, but we are predominantly a health and wellness website where we kind of talk about various different natural modalities. When it comes to something like Lyme disease, a lot of people tend to do a lot of modalities that are not necessarily very conventional. And the reason for that is because a lot of people turn to natural medicine or holistic medicine or naturopathic doctors and whatnot when you develop Lyme disease, especially in a country like Canada, where Lyme is looked at like it doesn't exist. Um, and basically for years, Kevin and I were made out to look like we were crazy or faking it. And I think that's why a lot of us lose faith in conventional medicine. And that that was one of the reasons why Kevin and I really wanted to start this channel. So that's predominantly what this channel is about, is about our journey through um, battling Lyme disease, not using conventional medicine. We didn't even use things like antibiotics just because at the time it was so difficult for us to get a diagnosis. And then when we finally did, we had kind of already started taking a lot of natural antimicrobials, antivirals, antifungals. We started doing electromedicine. We started drinking, um, structured water we started you know paying attention to our circadian biology and by then we were already well on our way to recovery so we didn't feel we needed the antibiotics this is something i wanted to address and the reason why i'm even getting into this is because i've gotten a lot of positive feedback and I always appreciate when you guys leave comments down below or on our Facebook or Instagram or send me emails telling me that you know some of the stuff that we've talked to you guys about you were able to relate or you know some of it's helped you and please continue doing that because it always that motivates me to keep making these videos and blogging and posting and all that because this can get being on YouTube, for instance, I just wanted to talk about this. Being on YouTube can get very, can be very difficult or putting your life out on the internet can be very difficult at times for me. Kevin's a little bit better about not allowing people's comments to really get to him. But what's been happening with me in the last, say, year, I've been, it's kind of been a roller coaster ride, not even necessarily with my health, although I will get to that because it does sometimes affect my health. But, and I've talked to other people who I've noticed when they are allowing people to get at them, whether it be from people saying negative things towards you or thinking that you're a quack or that you're into woo woo and all that stuff, that stuff does get to you, especially when you've been through as much as Kevin and I have been through. But the reason why I decided that I would go ahead and create this channel was because that these were the things that we had to do to get better. Like for instance, lately I've been posting a lot about non-native EMFs and electromagnetic fields and how detrimental those are to, to all biological life really. And I have been getting great comments in regards to this and then I've gotten the worst feedback ever And the thing that drives me nuts about that is that there is just so much scientific evidence out there now There are plenty of doctors Organizations there are engineers who are out there telling you that this technology the, te the technologies that we've created like the things that we have like our cell phones and Wi-Fi this stuff even though it's non-ionizing radiation it does cause detrimental effects 
to human health. And it really does, when you look at it under the microscope and if you put somebody into a, an area that's high in EMF, you'll notice that their blood clumps together and creates what's called Rouleau uh, formations, which people who have tons of Rouleau formations tend to be very sickly people or people who will have cancer. So, you know, they're now saying, there are plenty of doctors, even the World Health Organization recently came out with a statement. Um, I don't mean to be uh, defensive, but I have received three comments. And they're just kind of negative comments towards what, for instance, Kevin and I believe in a product called the Blue Shield. I wouldn't tell you guys or I wouldn't be promoting or advocating for the Blue Shield if I didn't believe that it worked. I've said this numerous times on my channel. I don't promote things just because a company wants me to or is paying me out. To be honest, I was promoting, even before I came an affiliate for Blue Shield, I was promoting the Blue Shield years ago. Kevin and I have been using the Blue Shield now for almost 10 years, probably more than 10 years because we got our first handhelds back in 2008. So. I really do believe in that technology only because I am what's called EHS sensitive so and a lot of people will tell you that that doesn't exist just like they told us for years that Lyme disease didn't exist so when people start to tell me things don't exist I don't listen to people anymore because I'm not gonna let people tell me what it is that I'm feeling about my body and what is happening in my physical experience I know for years I let people dictate what I was feeling and then I ended up taking 16 pills a day for my Crohn's disease and I told doctors for years this stuff wasn't helping me and I wasn't feeling better. In my heart I knew that there were better ways to controlling my Crohn's disease. A lot of my Lyme disease symptoms were chalked up to being Crohn's disease symptoms and when I even brought this up with a GP and my GI specialist years ago, which I no longer see either of them, they both told me that Lyme disease didn't exist and that everything that I was feeling was probably due to my Crohn's disease and malnourishment. So I can't feed into this negativity anymore, but I just need to start realizing from deeper within myself that people who are super negative are just not open-minded people. And they're not people who have had the types of experiences that Kevin and I have had. So they really don't understand anything about this. Actually, to be honest, I would say that a lot of the treatments that Kevin and I have done to ourselves over the years, the natural modalities that we've used for to clear up our Lyme disease are very similar to the ones that you would use if you have cancer. Again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not really entitled to even discuss this stuff with you, but this is my personal experience and I'm only speaking from my experience here. So I'm going to stop this conversation now, but if all I wanted to say about that is if you have something constructive to say, I am more than happy to respond back to those people. However, if you're here just to poke fun, tell people that they're crazy, or um, basically be flat out rude, or I'm just not going to respond back to your comments. There is skepticism out there towards a lot of the things that Kevin and I discuss, and that is fine. But then again, if I were to listen to those very people, these are the same people that are also skeptic about the idea that Lyme disease even exists or that non-native EMFs hurt people or that conventional medicine unfortunately is not the right way to go for all people. So I just have to realize that I'm not going to get through to everyone and that's fine. That's not what I'm here to do. Kevin and I are not here to convince you that what we did is the end all be all in the, and the only way to heal your autoimmune disease or your Lyme disease. If you would have saw us several years ago, we were not at all the people we are today. Most people who have had severe Crohn's colitis, like myself, I was diagnosed back in 2008, usually at around this time, are back and forth to their GI specialists. They're having bowel resections, fistulas, constant inflammation, diarrhea, or constipation, or bleeding, or all of these things. They're not able to eat. They're on, you know, say 16 uh, NSAIDs. They're taking um, proton pump inhibitors. They're on biologics. They're on all these other things. And all I have to say there, and same, the same goes for Kevin, you know, in Canada, he was technically diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And then when we got our Lyme tests done, our Lyme tests had, we had to send our bloods. First of all, we did what's called BIE or um, a lot of electronic testing. So you, there's, there are multiple ones out there now. The one that I used was called a BIE machine, I believe. And then there's things like on demand and all these other ones where it energetically tests 
your body for the different types of bacteria, parasites, or fungus, or viruses, or anything that are that is currently happening in your body. You can also check to see um, what foods you're sensitive to using this type this type of testing. It can tell you where the weaknesses are in specific organs, whether it be your liver or your kidney. It just goes on to, oh, it can tell you about the heavy metals. It can tell you everything. And to be honest, a lot of people think this is woo-woo and quackery. And to, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, to be completely honest, these tests were always way more accurate, extremely accurate, I found. And at the time, it wasn't even when I was getting the test, but it was years later that these um, issues would arise. And then I would be like, wow, that test was actually more accurate than any type of conventional test that I had ever done at the hospital or even sending off my bloods to say um, the specialized light lab that did our blood tests for our Lyme to finally determine if we had Lyme and co-infections was done at Igenix. And yes, it came back positive and the reason why i even did that test wasn't because i didn't believe in electro testing i guess you could call it kevin and i are big proponents of electro medicine and i would say that that probably falls into the same category but the reason why i did it was because I, a lot of skepticism was surrounding kevin and i because a lot of people don't believe in lyme disease or or i should say they believe in lyme disease but they believe that lyme disease you take a pill and it's the, the infection's gone within 30 days people don't believe in chronic lyme disease and they don't believe that Lyme disease can reactivate all your retroviruses and they don't believe that Lyme disease could potentially cause other problems in your body. For instance, it could reactivate um, all these retroviruses, which then you know sometimes leads to autoimmune diseases for some of us, or cysts that pop up all over our bodies, or you know problems with our bones, or problems with our vision, or problems with our ears and deafness and blindness, or problems, or even like you know what? Let me just say this: problems with even cancer, because there is a lot of there's a lot of information out there now saying that if you do have Lyme disease and it's not taken care of there are people that are developing tumors later on in life. That's why they call Lyme disease the great imitator, the great imitator, because before you get diagnosed with Lyme disease, you usually get diagnosed with every other disease under the sun first, before then realizing you have Lyme disease. I'm not to say that those other conditions don't exist, like my Crohn's colitis and you know the idea that Kevin had MS. I'm just saying that I think a lot of these reactivated retroviruses and other issues that come up is a problem that's underlying at a deep cellular level um, due to toxins or bacteria or parasites. So for instance, in this case, I think for us, the Lyme infection, which our immune systems were already fairly weak, because Kevin and I, let's face it, Kevin and I were young when we got sick. You know, we were, I was 28 and Kevin was 28, 29, because he's only a year older than me we were young and we were going out and we were drinking and at the time we smoked and we were you know partying a lot and not sleeping regularly and it was just after college so you can imagine all of that you know what i mean we weren't always like this we weren't always like super clean eaters to be honest i was the worst per i ate the worst in my teen years i i don't think anybody ate any more any poor more poorly than i did i used to eat at mcdonald's on a daily basis or burger king or drink like three or four tim hortons coffees because we're in canada here I, I did it all and like i said i smoked for almost 20 years so like i was doing all the things that you're not supposed to do so my immune system was already very weak when i went in to getting severely ill with my infection which to me first popped up as crohn's colitis and again i've always had issues with my stomach even when i was very little and i attribute a lot of that to constantly repeatedly offending my digestive system by eating things that i knew i shouldn't eat on top of eating a lot of dairy which i've always been allergic to dairy since i was my mom remembers weaning me off the breast and immediately after that she put me on um, cow's milk and she said you know my body broke out in eczema so she knew right away that i was having problems with dairy but i continued to eat it and drink it up until i was like 16 or 17 regularly even though it would hurt my stomach every time because i would just be like oh well you know i'm gonna drink this or eat this and then i'll die with stomach pain for the next three hours but that's fine it doesn't do anything you know and that was my mentality back then that you know 
I was untouchable, this stuff wasn't hurting me, and it didn't really matter because it was all gonna be phased out eventually out of my body and that I would be fine. But little did I know that years later, it would pop up over and over again. And I do believe a lot of people say it's just entirely autoimmune. I do believe that yes, it does have an autoimmune component and that we do probably have um, a predisposition to things like Crohn's and colitis, but I think repeatedly destroying your gut is also going to lead to leaky gut, which then leads to things like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease and these more severe um, autoimmune di diseases or conditions. Kevin and I really needed a little break. Um, and so we decided to hop in our car the week that we left and we decided to drive down to Florida and spend some time grounding ourselves and trying to get our circadian biology back into check by waking up early and going to bed early and being away from all of our technology and basically taking um, what I like to call a technology detox. Um, I actually had another comment on my Facebook, which I'll bring up. And one guy said, oh, it's so funny that you're promoting and talking about non-native EMFs, but then you use all of these devices that give off EMF. I've already discussed this in another video. I think I even linked in that blog post that Kevin is an EMF specialist. So we have mitigated, remediated a lot of the non-native EMFs in our house. And if you would like to see that video, I'll post it up here on all the different things that we've done. Our house has been fully tested. Everything that we use, we do not use Wi-Fi, as I've said before, and everything that we've used in our house or use in our house is hardwired. Therefore, we haven't had Wi-Fi in our house for probably four or five years. And when I do get on my desktop, I do wear my blue blockers. I try not to use my cell phone in the house. Cell phones are reserved for, me, for using them outside of the house and even our laptops and everything like that are all plugged into what are called hotspots. Make a long story short, because of things like this and just because we've been working really, really hard on various different things, um, we needed a break and so we took some time off and we went to Florida and we had the most amazing time and I'm missing the sun already, but it was just really great to get away from it all. I know I haven't gotten into it extensively about what the Photon Genie and the Photon Genius do, but just know that we used both of these tools when we were struggling with all of our health conditions and we found them very beneficial. Were they the end all be all and we didn't have to do anything else? Absolutely not, because that's another question I get all the time is what did we do to get rid of my Crohn's or my colitis? I always say Crohn's colitis because technically I have both. People get, I get that question all the time. Like, what did you do to get rid of this? Like, what did you eat or drink? And a lot of people will say, what did you guys do to get rid of your Lyme disease? And I know the Lyme people probably know this a little bit more, that it's just not one thing that's really gonna heal your condition or your disease. There are just multiple things that you have to do. Like Kevin and I have literally turned our lives upside down and then right side up again. Um, with a different perspective and you need to look, and that's just how I can describe it. You need to look at life a lot differently when you develop an illness like this. And um, I even think back now about how for years I was very almost embarrassed to let people know how sick I really was. And so was Kevin. I remember even, we were talking about this the other day about how a lot of people who, with Lyme disease aren't able to go to work um, and they end up having to take sick leave just because First of all, not only is your body literally like being eaten alive and not only do you feel like you've got issues with every single part of your body, but it just plays a real big toll on your mental health as well. Um, and both of us were just talking about this the other day about how we are both very good at hiding all the pain and suffering that we went through and i think that's why even a lot of people that maybe know me today had no idea that i was so sick just because my pain tolerance um could be like a nine or a ten and you, you wouldn't even know that i was feeling any pain today like right now i'm sure most of you guys are looking at me and thinking that there's absolutely no pain in her body she looks good and she's well put together but like my back is hurting a little bit right now i mean i still have issues off and on especially when i'm being sedentary and you know, allowing things to bother me. But for the most part, 
I am fairly healthy now. Like years ago, if you saw me, I had so many issues with my back and my neck and liver pain and all different types of organ pain and muscle pain and eye pain and sinusitis and all these other issues that Kevin and I have talked about over the years. And like literally like Kevin was going blind and his skin was like literally falling off and he never even took a day off of work. So that just goes to tell you what kind of people we are. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, I think the only people that even knew I was going through all of my health problems at the time were the women that I used to work with when I worked at the nutraceutical company because I literally, I couldn't hide it every day just because my head would be hurting so bad or my brain fog would be so bad or my blood pressure would be fluctuating all over the place and it would be so bad that I would literally be either running off to the bathroom or passing out, nearly passing out. So, and of course I had a lot of digestive issues too with my, with my um, not only with the Crohn's, but with the Lyme disease. So I think they're the only ones that truly knew what I was going through as well as Kevin and maybe some people in my family who saw me like literally slowly dying a couple of years back, back in, I think the last time I was even that bad was probably back in 2016. And that's when I, literally dropped off probably 26 or 27 pounds off of my current weight so i was like 80 they get my lowest i was like 86 or 87 pounds and at that point it was difficult for me to walk because my legs hurt so bad We're, we were working on our website and websites. So we have two. So the one is the Energy Balancing Light Studio. That's where people can come into our home. And we do have some supplements that we sell out of our home, specifically cannabis sativa, hemp seed oil, and vitamin C and a few others like fulvic acid. Um, these are primarily all the supplements that we now use. These were not all the supplements we once upon a time had to use when we were trying to treat our Lyme disease. So I wanna make that very clear. These are basically like our, our staples now, which is cannabis, sativa, hemp seed oil, which is from the seeds. So this is not from the plant. So this is not a CBD or a THC product, although I did use those as well. This is a high omega profiled supplement. So basically in a vegan or vegetarian source, so basically it is really high in omega threes and sixes and nines and it's got and it's like one of the only ones that was bred in to have a high amount of gla so this has got higher amounts of gla than evening primrose oil so the reason why some people would want to take high amounts of gla is number one it's supposed to be really great for your skin um it's supposed to be really great for your hair it's extremely anti-inflammatory which is why i take it over time and again this is very gradual and it's accumulative so if you take a cannabis sativa hemp seed oil over time you may find benefit in reduced inflammation in your joints or if you have skin ailments or things like eczema or psoriasis or things like that um, other people claim that it just makes them feel clear-headed um, because again it is hemp it's made from hemp seeds so there is going to be minuscule amounts of all of those cannabinoids like cbd um, thc cbg cbn which people only ever concentrate on cbd and thc but there are lots of different cannabinoids that are very helpful to the body so we take that the other reason why we take it is it because it we use it as our multivitamin as well because it does contain some of the b vitamins naturally vitamin d vitamin a vit a little bit of vitamin c no not vitamin c it's the only one that does not contain any vitamin c which is why we sell a separate lipospheric vitamin c um and i've talked about the lipospheric vitamin c in another video maybe i'll post that up here this the reason why we believe in this one specifically is because it was literally a lifesaver for both of us while we had our Lyme disease and even with my Crohn's when I was experiencing a lot of inflammation or brain fog or Kevin was literally going blind he would start popping like three to six of these small it was even more sorry for him it was like me it was three to six of them him it was like six to ten of these a day which is kind of expensive but this would like literally bring back the vision in his eye um, and we also used the vitamin C religiously through all of our um, Lyme treatments because it really helped us with the herxing that we experienced. I explain what a Herxheimer reaction is on my website because I think it's important for people 
um, embarking on any type of a cleansing process or a detoxification process or anyone struggling with things like cancer or Lyme disease or other infections to really understand what a Herxheimer reaction is. 